Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard once again. Today we're gonna take a look at the Potensic Atom 2. Just seven months ago I was reviewing the version 1 of this drone and I have to say this one looks incredibly similar but they improved it a lot under the hood especially in the camera department. And finally we have a much more competent camera. It's still on a 3-axis gimbal but the sensor is a half a inch Sony 48 megapixel 1.8 aperture. You're gonna get much better dynamic range, image quality at 4K30, and also much better low light performance compared to the previous version. And the rest of the drone hardware is pretty much the same as the old version. They improve the propellers a little bit, they make less noise and they have more efficiency, and the battery are the same as the old version, which can be a good thing if you have the old ones. And one battery will give you around 32 minutes of fly time. If you get the fly more combo, the drone comes in this very nice carrying bag. It even has the holder for the suitcase. And inside everything is protected and it has its own place. This is the new radio controller. It has been improved a lot. It feels a lot more substantial compared to the previous version. You have the gimbal heads stored at the back, they are made of metal, they feel very very nice. You can extend it to fit a lot of devices, even tablets. The antenna pops up like this, so it's directional, it's gonna give you a much better range. And finally there are two sliders, one controls the tilt, one controls the zoom, and two customizable buttons. With the Fly More Combo you also get a 3-in-1 battery charger, it's the same as last time, they didn't upgrade it to USB-C, so to charge you will need to use the integrated power adapter. Like this, it's not a major inconvenience but it's only 60 watts and USB-C is totally capable of providing 60 watts. It's gonna charge the batteries super fast and all of the same time, so in one hour you have three batteries. Still each battery has its own USB-C plug if you want to charge them with that. You also have USB out if you want to use this charger as a power bank. And finally it's time to fly. They made a completely new app for this drone, it's called Potency Kiv and it works a lot better and smoother than last time. Time. To take off, press both corners like ah. this, and boom, on and press up, and the drone the starts flying. If you click in the corner up here, you can set up a lot of things about the home point, and you can have the drone come back if you lose signal where it started, it can come back where the radio is, which is super convenient, so it's dynamic, maybe you are on the boat, the boat is moving, the drone is gonna come back to you, not where you took off, and also you can customize it on the map and select a point where you want the drone to come back. And you have all your safeties in this menu as well. You can select how far you want the drone to be able to go, how high, it's maximum 120 meters with the new laws. And also the return altitude. If you lose signal, the drone is gonna go 60 meters high and come back. It doesn't have sensors, so it cannot avoid obstacles. And these settings at the top, video, normal and sport, are the drone speed modes. So you can have video, which is the slowest and it goes quite slow, normal, it's normal, and sport, it goes the fastest it can go, which is around 58 kilometers per hour. Alternatively, if you push the C2 button, this one on the back, it cycles through them. It's set up like that from factory. This button, if you long press, you cycle between video and photo mode. If you quick press, it starts recording and it takes a photo. You have a lot of options for photos. I suggest you taking them in 4x3, RAW plus JPEG for the maximum quality. RAW, you can edit it more in post. And also you have different settings to take photos. You have an interval timer, so it takes a photo every a few seconds. 8K photos, I tried them, but the normal RAW photos are better because 8K photos don't have RAW for some reason. They are slightly more definition because the sensor is 48 megapixel, but the normal photos, I feel like they work maybe even a little bit better, they are less over sharpened. You have bracket mode, so it takes three or five photos at different exposures, you can combine them in post to create a HDR photo with the highlights and the shadows together. Burst mode is the drone takes multiple photos at the same time, so maybe you have someone jumping and you take a lot of photos and you can select the best looking one. And lastly, you have pano mode, panoramic. You can take a 180 degree panoramic photos. It takes three photos and combines them, a vertical one or a wide angle. So it takes nine photos and merges them together. Sadly, it doesn't have 360 degrees, which I would have liked to see. Let's take a look at the video mode. This has been <laughs> improved quite a little bit. So 
First of all, we have the normal kind of video, which is standard 16x9 4K30. And the video quality has been improved quite significantly <laughs> compared to last time. The dynamic range is finally good, the colors are good. The drone has only this color profile, it's either normal or HDR, which is high dynamic range. It doesn't have log, which is a shame because they could have easily added it in, uh, in software and um, you color it later, you have more dynamic range, you have more flexibility and it's a more professional feature. The signal is a lot better compared to last drone, even if we are in C mode, I feel like it's a lot stronger. The transmission is not entirely smooth all the time, even if I'm pointing the drone directly. I wish it was slightly smoother, but the latency has been greatly reduced compared to the Atom 1. Still, is not DJI quality signal. If you go from 4K to 2.7K, you have 9 by 16 vertical. You have a lot more vertical field of view and you can shoot much better content for social media if you need. And you can even shoot in 4x3, which is full sensor field of view and something I don't really see often with drones and I wish I saw because it's a very nice function. It gives you the flexibility of using horizontal and vertical with the same shot. In the video modes, you also have AI Night. This uses pixel binning, it has 48 megapixels, it becomes a simulated 12 megapixels. So every four pixels, it uses as one. It's bigger, it has more light entering in, and you have a much better night shot with this function. So use it if you need to film at night. And lastly, we have slow motion shooting, up to 5x slow motion. Let's take a look at the AI track modes. Basically, just highlight something on the screen. It understands it's a person. Boom, let's record. And now the drone is tracking me. So if I move, it's following me. Very nice if you want to maybe talk to the drone. And this mode, you can actually start it at low altitude. So the drone is low to the ground and probably, yes, you can even move it and it's gonna keep track of you. This is very, 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 very useful for beginners because you don't have to move too many sticks and you can get a very nice shot. And it sticks very nicely. I can even go in, no, maximum normal. Okay, okay, it picked me up with the GPS. And this not only works with a person, but also with every other object, maybe a house. And boom, it's tracking the whole house and you can take a orbit shot and whatever you want of that place. This is super, super, super nice to get very smooth shots. Let's try the follow function now. Let's highlight myself again and go follow. Boom, let's go. And you can't because the drone is low on the ground. Stup super, super stupid safety measures just allow me to follow myself close to the ground. I understand they do it to avoid crashes. It's a little bit of a shame to follow myself only top down, but it works pretty nicely once you set it up. You see? Tracking me and following me, no problem. No. Okay, it lost me for good. Let's try the parallel mode. Technically, the drone should follow me sliding and not turning if I turn. Yeah. Well, this is very convenient again. I like these automated functions. I hope and I wish that they allow these moves lower to the ground because it's always a little bit top-down effect. Let's try the AI quick shots. These ones are preset moves, so the drone moves without you touching it. Let's go with the pull away. And it can go 150 meters pull away. I've never seen anything like this. I'm very curious to see what it does. And I have never seen a drone do 150 meters pull away, but it's a function now I want on every drone I own because it's super, super convenient and you get the whole panorama. You can do rocket so the drone goes top down for 100 meters. Again, it goes way, way, way longer than most other drones that do maximum 15, 30 meters. This thing goes 100. It's just crazy. I have to say the quick shots on this drone are probably the best I ever seen just because they go so far and they allow you to pick up so much more. <laughs> it's crazy. 
You have circle, so it automatically spins around the subject. Then you have spiral, it does the same thing, but it goes further as it spins. Then we have the boomerang, which is a variation of the orbit and spiral. It does an oval orbit. And lastly, we have the dolly zoom. It's a super cool effect. The drone goes back and it zooms in at the same time. And so it creates this very, very trippy effect you are seeing right now. I'm gonna show you a couple more settings in the app. If you click on the A button, you have access to manual control of shutter speed and exposure and everything is very nice, both for photos and videos. If you click at the top corner, you have all of the settings. So this is the safety settings. I'm gonna cycle quickly through them. This is one of the first updates of the drone. It's gonna get updated even more. And you have even the details for the remote ID. In calibration, you can calibrate and fine tune everything. If the gimbal is a little bit sideways at an angle, you can fix it, which is very handy. DJI doesn't let you do that. You can customize all of the buttons. It's really, really well made and granular. They, they even have the sliders so you can control the sensitivity of the sticks and the movement of the sticks. So you can do very, very nicely cinematic maneuvers, even in sport mode. Again, well, well, well done, Potensic. This is the camera settings and it's mostly the settings you had before. You can format the SD card, auto center target, defog mode if you, there is some fog. Then video transmission tab, not much to show for. I wish they would allow us to switch to FCC mode, but... And yeah, you have uh, the about section. If you click on the map, you have many different settings available. You can minimize it, open, use uh, satellite default or night mode. And also they have waypoint skimming. They were on the original Atom drone and they're gonna come on this drone. So you can actually select points on the map and have the drone doing automated missions. Again, very nice for entry level drone. You have the gallery with all of the shots you took. They go through the controller and through the phone, but you can actually download them even faster if you exit the app and you do smart transfer. The drone is going to connect via Wi-Fi to the phone directly and you can transfer things at 25 megabit per second. And it's time for my final opinion on the Potensic Atom 2. Despite it looking very similar to the previous version, the improvements under the hood are quite substantial and it's the best drone Potensic ever made by a long shot. Like the camera quality, way better. The signal on this works really, really good. Not, it's like 90, 95% of what DJI does. It's just a little bit more notchy. It's not as fluid as DJI, but the latency is very good. Also, the quick shots have been incredible. The best ones I have ever seen in a drone, even better than the DJI ones, just because they allow you to go much further. I never saw 150 meters zoom out, never. Crazy, good, good job. It's just software things, but I liked it. The AI tracking works fine. I wish and I hope they update it to work lower to the ground because we need a follow mode that works lower. I don't want to be top down, but it's just, minor software adjustments and Potensic has been listening to the consumers so probably they are going to introduce those mods very soon. It's like the waypoints, people have been requesting them on the Atom one and they have added it and they are going to add it to this one as well. I hope and I wish again they add log footage to the recording so it becomes a little bit more suitable for entry level work. But already it's a very good drone to be used for personal use and maybe even for some light work like the restaurant next door needs a video you can totally use this drone. They are also leveling up on the service department because they have an after sale insurance you can buy called the Potensic Care. If you lose the drone or if you break it they offer replacements. Capability wise this drone places itself between a DJI Mini 4K and DJI Mini to, it has basically the same camera, but a lot more functions, especially the tracking functions that are not present in those drones. And it's a little bit less than a Mini 3 from DJI, which is already a couple year old drone. Talking about prices, at the moment I'm recording this video with no discounts, keep an eye out for them. The drone is 360 bucks for the drone only, one battery and the controller, and it is 495 bucks for the version I showed you today with two extra batteries and the multi-charger. 
it's not the most competitive pricing. On its own, it's fine. The package is valid. But if you start comparing it with other options from, for example, DJI, like the DJI Flip or the DJI Mini 3, it's close. For a few bucks more, you can get those drones and they are a little bit more capable, I feel like. I'm not even talking about the used market, which is a lot more competitive. If you're interested about this drone, I would suggest you keep checking the prices every now and then, because most often, Potensic discounts them after a while. Now the product is very new and it's already compelling and already working nice, but for a hundred bucks less, this becomes a best buy. And that's all for today. I want to praise Potensic again for making such a competent drone. I feel like very soon we're going to start seeing pro model drones from them. And I'm very curious because I feel like DJI is too much of a monopoly and we need brands to step up and create some competition. And as always, remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Let me know what you think about this drone, what do you think about the brand Potensic. And if you want to buy something, check out the links in the description down below. Clicking on them, you help my channel a lot. And many times I try to find coupons. Stay safe and happy flying. Bye.